Ah, Super Mario Odyssey. Folks, welcome to our first ever First Impressions video. Uh, and we're talking about Super Mario Odyssey. I played it for about two hours last night. I actually did it through live stream. And it, it we're, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about my experience with the game. Uh, we're not going to be reviewing Super Mario Odyssey. We haven't hit our stretch goal yet on Patreon. But we're getting closer. So let's just talk about what I feel. There's a lot of people asking questions in the live stream how I feel about the game right now. And I got to say... I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler-free as I can, but because it's only the beginning of the game I'm talking about, I feel like I don't need to hold back too bad. Uh, you start out, you know, with, with a light story, but it's an interesting story. Uh, and, and this is probably the one spoiler I'm going to throw in there. So I'm warning you right now, I'm going to spoil the very beginning of the story. Uh, the game starts out where you're fighting against Bowser. Mario is literally already fighting Bowser. This is usually what happens at the end of a Mario game. Uh, so he's fighting Bowser, who already captured Peach. And, yeah, he, Bowser's all decked out like he's getting married. Peach is not decked out like she's getting married, nor is Mario. And it's uh, an interesting situation because Mario loses, and his hat basically gets destroyed. Uh, and before we even see Cappy, we see, you know, Tiara, or like the, the I don't know the name of the character yet, but the Tiara character with the eyes that... Uh, that Bowser has put on top of Peach. Um, and it's just a really interesting beginning. It's not like it's a super, super in-depth story, and you find out that the Tiara thing is Cappy's sister, so he, he's trying to save his sister. You're trying to save, you know, the princess, uh, as always. So uh, that's kind of the setup, and there really hasn't been a whole lot of story since. Uh, outside of the fact that Bowser's kind of destroyed the world, uh, or at least destroyed the Cap Kingdom, so that that, that happened, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how the rest of the world plays out yet. But you start on the Cap Kingdom, and you can't really do much. It's a tutorial. It's teaching you how to play. There's not really a whole lot of like interesting discoveries beyond some coins. Uh, but it's fun. It's interesting. It's a nice little tutorial area. Um, and that's all I'm going to say for the story. There's a couple other things that happen, but you know I'll leave them for you guys to discover. Uh, you do get to fight you know, a, a few bosses or a couple bosses so far. I fought in two bosses. Uh, both of them relatively easy, although this is the beginning of the game. Now, I've heard one of the criticisms of this game by certain reviewers is that it's not extremely challenging. And I think if you're just playing from start to end, if you're just going from I want to go from point A to saving Princess Peach at the end of the game, it probably is pretty easy. I think the required moons that you need for your Odyssey ship because you need to collect moons for your Odyssey ship to travel from location to location, uh, are relatively easy to get. Because you get some for beating the boss, you get some you just are just really easy to find or right out in the open. Uh, and because of that, I don't think you actually need to do a lot of exploration, to uh, at least early on in the game, to get the moons that are required to move on to the next area. Uh, so from that perspective, I think I understand the lack of challenge. But I think what some people forget, is that challenge in Mario games isn't the boss fights. I mean, if you think back to Super Mario 64, because that's what I'm going to keep comparing this game to, the challenge is not the boss fights. The boss fights in Super Mario 64 are not hard. Uh, I, I don't think I ever died to a boss in Super Mario 64, and I was like 10 or 12 at the time. So I, I'm not going to die now um, unless I really, really screw up. Uh, and that's despite the fact that if you watch that live stream or you're watching now, uh, I'm a little clunky with the controls. Not only because there's a lot of new moves, but even some of the old moves, like the triple jump, um, I, I was struggling with. And that's okay. I mean, and I'm, I'm sure you guys have noticed by now, the footage I'm showing you right now uh, isn't from our live stream. I'm, I'm playing Cascade Kingdom, uh, which is the second kingdom you go to after Cap Kingdom. And... Yeah, I mean, I've, I've already done everything I can do. I've already, like, 100% of this area for as much as I'm able to. There are some moons you can't get until late game or, like, end game. Like, you beat the game, then you can go back and collect more moons. Uh, so I've, I've done everything I can, so you're not going to see... You, you'll see the outlines of the moons and the coins or whatever. But I'm just showing you some gameplay because I, I was doing this all during live stream. Anyways, it's, it's very interesting uh, just experiencing this on the whole... Um, when I first got the Cascade Kingdom during the live stream, uh, I got to the top of the pole. There's a pole you can climb right away. And I just wanted to see, like, you know, the world itself. And nostalgia just rushed over me. Um, I got emotional. I cried. I legit cried. 
because this world looked like a world from Super Mario 64. And if I'm being honest, I've been waiting 21 years for a true sequel to Super Mario 64. Like a true honest to goodness, slap me in a world and let me freely explore game. Yes, there is an objective. And they give you a mark on your map for the objective. But that's not what made Super Mario 64 the way it is. And that's not what makes Odyssey. Well, when people talk about the lack of challenge, I question how many of those people 100% of the game. And I'm not saying that because you need a 100% Odyssey to enjoy it. No, no, no. But one of the great things about this game is it is a 3D platforming collect-a-thon. This is just like the games we got back in the 90s. Just like the Super Mario 64s and the Banjo-Kazooie's and even the Conker's Bad Fur Days of the world. Uh, you can even argue Crash Bandicoot back in the day was a little bit like this. A different style of, of platforming, but still. Uh, this is what we grew up on in the 90s. And these kind of games just don't exist very much anymore. We got Ukulele, which some people chastise for being uh, too much like the old school Banjo Kazooie games, including all the faults. And I haven't played it, so I, I don't know what that means because uh, I didn't see any faults. Like to me, Banjo Kazooie, from my memory, I know it's rusty. Uh, I keep thinking it's a perfect video game, but I know it's not actually perfect. <laughs> you know, it's one of those, I'm older now, I'm not a child, I understand there's probably flaws. I just, because of nostalgia or whatever the case may be, I can't see what those flaws are. But Super Mario Odyssey, really, uh, as I said, I only played the first kingdom, so I'm not going to be like, oh, this is the best Mario game I've ever played, or this is the best game. Like, uh, I kept having some people ask me, hey, is this, the, is this better than Breath of the Wild? Like... You, that's something you can't determine until you've experienced the full game. Uh, and that doesn't mean you have to 100%. It, you got to at least get to the end. Uh, and I got to the end of Breath of the Wild. I haven't even 100% of Breath of the Wild. I'm working on a 100% Master Mode run, which is now on pause for Super Mario Odyssey because it's the new hot thing out. Uh, and I, I guess I said 21 years in the, in the waiting for a game like this. Um, so far, just in the Cascade Kingdom, I'm very impressed with this game. Uh, the T-Rex... Uh, they let you control a T-Rex early because that's in the Cascade Kingdom. Cascade Kingdom is basically the dinosaur kingdom. Uh, and the T-Rex, it, it wasn't as exciting as I hoped. Uh, maybe because I saw a small preview video where I just saw it kind of walking around wrecking things. That's pretty much all it does. Uh... I don't know what I really expected the T-Rex to do, if I'm being honest. Um, it's a T-Rex. It's just going to walk around and wreck things. That's just what it does. Uh, but, yeah, the, the game uh, basically gives you the ability to control it. As soon as you get Cappy, uh, it enables you to do basically every move in the game, but it slowly introduces you to these moves. So if you don't want to go into the action menu, because there's an action menu and it, it can, you can learn all the moves there, um, it will show you... Uh, as you need those moves, like eventually I'm sure I'm going to need the move where you throw the cap and you jump on the cap and you get across the gap. Now I've done that a couple times during the demo or during the demo during the, the live stream, but, uh, I'm not very good at it and it's going to take a lot of practice because it's a new move. Um, even the old moves, as I said, you know, the triple jump, I was really, really struggling with the triple jump, even though some people were saying it works exactly like in Mario 64. Well, here's, here's a new, here's a news flash. I haven't played Mario 64 in probably 20 years, uh, as much as. I'm not one of those gamers, I guess, that plays games. Like, there's some people that, oh, I love Mario 64 so much, I play it every single year, or I played through it a zillion times. I played through Mario 64 twice in my life, both of it the year that the game launched. So, I haven't really played since. Because I'm not one of those gamers that feels like I need to. I feel like there's always great games coming out, and I should be moving on to those experiences because I already got my full experience. And one thing, it, I actually struggled starting Super Mario Odyssey. I almost got emotional before the start because... Sometimes there's those rare moments in life you know you're about to start a special journey. And I've seen the reviews. I know how well this game is scoring. I know that it looks a lot, a lot like Mario 64. And sometimes you just know you're about to embark on a special journey and you're afraid to start. Because once you start, you can never do that again. You can replay the game. You can have fun with it. I'm not saying the game gets old or boring. But you'll never be at that point where you're first experiencing the game. I never played the demo for this game, whether it was at Best Buy or GameStop or Target or whatever. I didn't play it at E3. Like, literally, unlike Breath of the Wild, which I had played demos of and had experience with before it came out, especially in that opening area. So a lot of the luster of the opening area was kind of lost on me. Uh, a lot of the wow factor, because I got that wow factor at E3 2016. Um, I've not had the wow factor with Odyssey. So it was one of the games, where, like, for the first time since I was a child, I went into it almost blind, uh, barely knowing anything about it. And that experience of just starting that special journey, playing it for your first time, 
even if I had known a bunch, whatever, playing the game for your first time, very few times in my adult life have I experienced the rush and the thrill and the reverence of just knowing I'm in the midst of something special. And I'm never going to get that again. And because I'm never going to get that again, I'm going to 100% Odyssey this first time I play it, and I'll probably never touch the game again. Um, unless I'm recording gameplay specific for videos that we're doing here at Nintendo Prime. And that's just because it's a single-player game. That's just the way I am with single-player games. I usually play them through once. If I want to 100% the game, maybe I'll play it again, or I'll try to 100% the file I have, and that's it. In fact, the only reason I'm playing through Breath of the Wild twice is because Master Mode uh, wasn't available till later. If Master Mode would have been available day one when Breath of the Wild launched, I would have started the game with Master Mode, never even played in normal mode, and I would have already beaten it and maybe even 100%ed it. But um, the reason I didn't 100% normal mode in, Ma in Breath of the Wild is because I knew Master Mode was coming. And I wanted the 100% Master Mode because I feel like that's a grander challenge to me as a Zelda fan. This is just... There's not a lot I could say that hasn't been said by other people about Mario Odyssey so far. I'm at the beginning of the game. There's no way in heck I can, I can use the beginning to judge the rest. It is relatively easy. It is relatively uh, holding your hand a little bit, just a little bit. Um, for exploring and collecting all of the 50 coins and all of the... Uh, the moons I could collect, I think I could collect 18 moons or 17 moons or whatever the case may be right now in Cascade Kingdom. It wasn't exactly easy because you really have to look around for everything possible to collect those moons. Um, it just takes me back. Super Mario Odyssey is a 3D platformer built on basically the husk of, you know, the dead husk of Super Mario 64. And it's just brilliant. Uh, that formula that Super Mario 64 had, that all those collect-a-thon 3D platformers had, still works. It still works today. And the game's gorgeous on top. Now, it was only in Cascade Kingdom, but it is. It's a gorgeous game. Uh, I don't really have any... I didn't see any graphical issues. I, I never saw any frame rate dips. Now, there are frame rate dips. We know it. It happens in New Donk City, actually, a lot. So, I'm sure I'll, I'll experience some stuff there, but... Yeah, I'm really, really pleased with this game. And I'm actually curious what your guys' first impressions are of Super Mario Odyssey as well. Because, I mean, I could tell I'm playing something special. Is it going to be my favorite Mario game? I don't know. It's got a tall mountain to climb because the, the Super Mario Galaxy 2 is my favorite right now. And that's an excellent game. So it's got a, it's a tall task to top that. Uh, it's also a tall task to top my favorite game of all time, uh, Breath of the Wild. And it, it's a tall task to top my second favorite game of all time, Secret of Mana. So... Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but that's the crazy thing is that I don't know what's going to happen. I know some of the kingdoms, but I don't know what to do in those kingdoms. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be fun. I can't wait to 100% this game. Uh, it's one of those games, these collect-a-thon style 3D platforming games are the kind of games I want to 100%. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm just having a blast. That's all that really matters, right? Challenge or no challenge. I'm having a blast. And yes, I'm going to continue our live stream of this game later today. Uh, I don't know when. Just tune in when it happens. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike this video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content just like this. And I'll catch you in the next one.